Okay, for those that missed the one day, I just want to briefly go through the specification. One of the models in the successful developments model, broken down into six parts, the, C, the six C's to the ultimate specification. Okay, what's a specification? You're gonna learn exactly what one is, uh, how to use it, how to produce it, how to operate it, how to manage it, all the way through that property journey or refurbishment journey that you're going on. You're gonna learn why it's the most critical document in property, in construction. You're gonna learn how to produce a basic level of, of specification, and with the skills that we teach you, you'll be able to develop that further into a more advanced level of specification production. You're gonna learn how to use that specification to your advantage, and you're gonna learn the advantages of repeating a specification from project to project to project. You're gonna learn, you're not gonna learn, you're gonna see real life scenarios of not having a specification in place and how you can get stung from not having one. You're gonna learn the different approaches to producing a specification as well, and learn the how and the benefits of labor plant and materials, and you're gonna learn the pitfalls of labor plant and materials. You're gonna learn the benefits of labor only. You're gonna learn the how of labor only. You're gonna learn the pitfalls of labor only. All on the training, this is all goes into and broken down into some real, real detail. You're gonna learn how to produce that specification as well from, from a room by room approach and also on a trade by trade approach, two different ways of doing it. And you're gonna learn the impact of getting either of those two things wrong. Okay, this is what I hear time and time again from people in the property space when I challenge them on have you got a specification or what is it that you're gonna do. These are some of the things that we hear, okay? And if you've said any of these, stop it now, stop doing this shit now because you will eventually, you're gonna get stung in the end. It's gonna cost you a lot of money and it's so unprofessional to say these types of things. Okay, my builder's sound, he's done all of my projects, he just cracks on, he knows what I want, I've worked with him for years, you just pick, mate. Just make a start when you can. Oh, our Dave's gonna do that bit, so leave it out. If you take nothing away from this little session here or any of our training or any of our one day events, stop doing this, stop doing it right now. Okay, the most important you document that you'll ever produce in property development or in construction, any sort of refurb journey is this, it's specification, 100%. If you don't have a specification, your builder then has a license to print money. He can, he can absolutely kill your development with extras, with uh, changes, with delays, all them types of things if you don't give him a specification. If you give him one, uh, it removes all the wiggle room, it removes ambiguity. It holds everybody accountable to, to the products that are going in. It sets your stall out right, right from the off, right from day one. It, it demonstrates clarity from you. It de demonstrates clarity to him. He's going to know exactly what it is that you want. It's going to demonstrate a level of professionalism. It's going to show how serious you are about your developments when you produce documents such as this and give them to your builder to ask him to price up work for you. And in all, in all fairness and honesty, a good builder loves to see a specification because he knows exactly what he's got a price then. He ain't got to go out and guess. So the six C's to ultimate specifications broken down into six steps. And the first step is to be costed. Obviously we need to produce them costs before we do anything. The costed uh, section of the six C's to ultimate specification is further broken down into four more um, areas. The four, four S's to success. The first of those being standards. I am gonna rattle through these really quickly. I'm really conscious that you, you get the most value from this very quick brief as what you can. The first S is standards. So for each type of development, you need to define a standard. You must define a standard. If you're, if you're a low end flipper, you're, gonna, you're uh, just gonna put a, a, a quick, nice new crisp kitchen in there and a quick cheap bathroom, and you're gonna put in low end um, products. That's gonna attract a different standard to if you're gonna do a high end flip. So this is all about your standard. A HMO, you're not necessarily gonna start putting uh, solid oak floors and marble worktops on your kitchens in a HMO. But if you're gonna do a high-end flip, then you may. So you wanna be defining a different set of standards for different strategies that you may have in your portfolio. Are you going cheaper or budget, sort of entry-level developer spec? So the cheap of, cheapest of everything that you can get just to get that crisp, new, fresh look to get it back on the market or to get a tenant in there. Are we going to mid-range? Are we going sort of a HMO, someone that needs a bit of uh, sturdiness, a bit of tardiness to it? Or are we going to real high end? So we're going to go for a maximum value at the end, maximum profit, going for that high end, big ticket finish. Your standards that you define, they must be aligned with your exit and your budget. You've got to be both. You can't just, 
you know, go for a high-end flip with no budget, and you can't you can also go for a high-end exit if that isn't suited to the street area or type of clientele that you're aiming your product at. So that's standards very briefly. Suppliers, okay, these are the suppliers that we use for all of our products. Uh, get these, this is your supply chain. Get these people in your team. Start building relationships with these people. When you start building relationships with these people, you're gonna drive down prices. So these suppliers, you wanna be nominating where your products are purchased from. If, you, if your bathrooms are gonna be from Victoria Plum or B&Q, wherever that is, then them suppliers, they need to be nominated in your, in your own mind, in your business operating world, in your systems, that you need to be uh, communicating this to your guys. Uh, yeah, as I said, so you need to nominate your suppliers, your kitchen suppliers, if you're using Howden's, Magnet, uh, Ren, whoever that's gonna be, nominate them. The more the products that you buy from these people, the better rates you're gonna be able to negotiate when moving forward. Also, if, if you're nominating these suppliers, you're gonna know what, what the prices are. If you repeat the products, you keep repeating that product each time, it's gonna help you when pricing up your work. Door and skirtings, tiles and flooring, uh, considering brands as well, so it might not necessarily be a shop, but a brand such as Dulux or Antico Flooring. So we've got the uh, paint and uh, a flooring supplier there. Also, the other advantages of nominating that supplier, you're gonna know what your contractor's paid. If you're going on a, a sort of a labor only package with your contractor, you're gonna know what he's paid for that product because you've nominated it, you've told him which to buy. You're gonna know what the standard of that product is in advance because you've nominated it, you've already touched it. You'll start building relationships with them suppliers which will, which will encourage and attract future discounts, buying power and rebates maybe. Okay, that's the second S. The third S is the style. What style are we putting in these properties? Have a vision of your style, your, your, top, your sort of, express yourself, this is you going into that property. Have that style and translate that vision onto paper. Make sure that style runs throughout all your projects. If you've done one and it's been successful, why would you change it? You've got to keep that style and keep it running through. Start creating a brand for yourself. Repeat that style or in every property that you do. Contractors are going to start to learn your taste, the people that are putting in, what they can and can't get away with, what you will and won't accept. Repeating that style is going to help you massively as well when you're estimating moving forwards. So you've done one, you know what that costs, you know what that costs, you know what that costs. It's going to massively help you when moving forwards throughout your journey in development. It's going to help you in moving surplus materials on when you move on to the next project. So you finish one and you may have four or five packs of flooring left. Don't bother returning it to the store, move it on to the next project. You're saving yourself a trip by returning it, messing about the administration of that refund, move it on to the next job. Then you've got less to buy on the next one and so forth. It's also gonna help you with maintenance. Be specific. There's gonna be a word comes up on this slide in a minute that I always struggle to say, I make no apologies. So be specific, be as specific as possible. You only need to do this once. It sounds like a lot of work to have to be specific to this level and this degree. But once you've done it, you've done it. It's then nailed and you can then, you can then move that throughout your, throughout your journey. So once you've defined the door that you like, yes, it's quite descriptive to get it all in, which we'll come on to in a second. But when you move through into your next project, it's already done. It's just a cut and paste exercise onto the next address. Here it is, there's that word. More specif the more specificity, the more specificity, the more accuracy of price. So the more specific that you are, the more accurate that your prices are gonna be. And detail is key. Getting that detail, getting the colors, getting the style, getting the brand, getting the product range, all them things. If you can nail all those things out in your, in your specification, sizes as well, if you can nail all those things out, your price is gonna be so accurate all that wiggle room has gone away because you've clearly defined it in there. Here's a classic example. We see this quite regular. We'll get a property strategist or developer will come to our construction business and in their specification, specification, it may say something like that, replace all internal doors. It's not enough, guys. What you need to be doing is something as descriptive as that. So we're saying replace all internal doors with primed Howden's Dudoin smooth door, inclusive of three three-inch butt hinges in brushed steel Handles in brushed steel. Bathroom door should allow for a thumb turn lock, also in brushed steel. Yes, that sounds like a lot of work just to replace a door, but you only have to do it once. And once that's done, if you can mirror that through all your developments, that's it, it's done. All the wiggle room is gone. You can sit and price that piece of work up there 
quite easily. You can say that the smooth door costs 20 quid. The butt hinges might be three quid. The, uh, the handles, the handle and set, locking set might be six quid. So you know you've got like 30 quid there in, in materials, 30, 35 quid in materials. You know it's gonna take a joiner. You can hang three of them in a day. So, so you can start working out these things and all this specification work that you're gonna do now is gonna help you massively when it moves into the, the, the model of estimating. I hope you've got something from that. Let's go back, sorry. I hope you've got something from that. Uh, so do, I encourage you all, all of you to start work on these specifications now. If you need any help with any of them, drop some questions, fire them into the group, fire us an email across, attend one of our trainings, anything like that. I cannot stress how important it is to have a, a really good, solid, detailed specification. That's enough from me for now.